Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where OP gets his douchebag neighbor arrested. Our next Reddit post is from Prestigious Issue. When we found out that we'd be expecting not one, but two kids, we knew that we had to move to a real house with more space. At the time, we were still living in a one-bedroom studio one floor up from the ground floor, and its only entrance was a metal fire escape. This was not ideal for a pregnant woman, let alone living with two small babies. So we found a privately leased house that was newly renovated and had all the room that we were looking for, plus a large garden. We signed the lease and got the keys. As the owner drove off, the woman next door comes up to me and immediately starts demanding that we not make noise before noon because her boyfriend works nights and sleeps in. And she also gives me this whole long list of other do's and don'ts. So right off the bat, we knew the trouble was incoming. We moved in after two weeks and the whole street was warm and welcoming. My wife was almost due to give birth to my twin daughters and some people offered to help. They were really kind people. The neighborhood also warned us about our neighbors. Nobody liked them. He was a big bully and got into arguments with everyone. Also, they were known radio pirates, which means they illegally broadcasted on radio. On top of that, they would party Thursday through Sunday until 5 in the morning with loud music, constant yelling, always being drunk, etc. This was really something that we did not look forward to when moving in, especially with two babies on the way. The partying began immediately on full blast. It's real classy for them to demand that we be quiet when this douchebag needs his beauty sleep. Then, one day, my father-in-law came to put new grass in. He parked his trailer behind our house, which is public space. Not according to my neighbor, though. No, that exact spot where my father-in-law was parked was his spot, and we had to move the trailer. That wasn't going to happen because I wasn't about to walk all the way around the house with all that equipment. My neighbor got angry right away and demanded that we move it and I told him to go F himself. We just went on working and at the end of the day when my father-in-law went to hook up the trailer, bam, there was douchebag telling my father-in-law off, yelling that it's his spot and he better not park there again or else. You can mess with me all you want, I can handle it, but what you don't do is threaten my family. I ran outside and told my neighbor in no uncertain terms to back off or he'll be sorry. My neighbor backs off, my father-in-law leaves, and I go inside where I find my wife crying. She was scared that my neighbor might do something to her father or me, and this is something that we don't need right now. Combine that fear with hormones from being pregnant, and you can imagine what she was like. So I was even more pissed, but I had to promise not to act on anything. I promise not to do anything. Not yet, anyway. Time went on without any real incident, and then my wife went into labor. It didn't go smoothly, and we ended up having to deliver by C-section because one of my daughters was almost strangled by the umbilical cord. We had to stay three long, excruciating days there due to a lot of factors. When we finally got home, our families had put up a giant sign in our front yard welcoming the babies. The sign was already up for a few days prior to us coming home, so our friendly neighbors definitely knew about it. But did they care at all? No, they did not. From the first night on, they started partying and broadcasting their terrible music. They would start partying at noon and continue until 5 or 6 in the morning. Real classy. They kept going for days, so it wasn't just Thursday and Sunday, it was all day every day. So we were just broken. We hardly slept. One of our daughters suffered from heavy cramps, so that combined with the noise and her parents at the end of her wits, she cried a lot. And then I just had it. I did some research on radio pirates, the laws and regulations on his large 5 meter antenna in his backyard, which was illegal in itself. But he also used it to illegally broadcast on radio, which meant that he had a lot of equipment to do so. Which was even more illegal and can even get you jailed, but at the very least they could seize it and still find him big time. These fines could be anywhere from ten dollars to $45,000. Now, I didn't immediately turn him in. Instead, I started looking for another house to lease first. I figured turning him in wouldn't sit well with my neighbor, and I would have to leave my wife and baby alone in the house when I went to work every day. Now, I hear you guys thinking, why not just involve the police? Well, they're utterly useless in cases like this. We called them once, and what they did still disturbs me to this day. 
They rang the neighbor's doorbell and immediately started off by saying that we called them about a noise complaint. Yeah, you read that right. No protection whatsoever. They just blatantly told my neighbors that we're the reason they're there and just told them to keep it down, but that was it. They didn't even follow up with us or anything. As you can guess, the douchebag neighbor was now even more pissed and told me the next day, or rather, yelled over the fence that separates our backyard that I should not do that again. A threat that I told the police about, but without witnesses to corroborate, nothing could be done yet. Some days later, I walked out the front door and he was just stepping out of his car. He came up to me, demanding that I cut back some of our ivy that grew on our side of the fence because it tangled up with this huge antenna. He said that he would be gone for a few hours and that I could come into his garden to cut back the ivy that grew on their side of the fence. And then a light bulb went off in my head. I told him politely that I would do that immediately. Why? Because that gave me the perfect opportunity to find out the make and model of his antenna to ascertain its signal strength. Where all the cables went, what kind of cables they were, again to figure out what kind of signal strength it handled. Also, this would give me a good view of the equipment he had and I could take a picture of it through one of his windows. This was just icing on the cake because in the meantime I'd managed to find a new home and I already signed the lease so we'd be gone in two weeks. So after I trimmed the ivy and collected my evidence, I went online that night to find out the proper channels to report a broadcast pirate and which entity was tasked with catching said pirates. It turns out that I had to call the telecom agency and the police. So I gave the agency and the police all the evidence that I collected. I told them the frequencies he pirated so they could listen in. We moved two weeks later and they raided him two days after we moved. All of his equipment, computers, radios, cell phone, and his car was seized. They dragged both him and his wife out in handcuffs. All of this was live reported to me by one of my ex-neighbors who was equally ecstatic about this. It turns out this wasn't the first time that he got caught. It was his third. Also, his car was uninsured and uninspected. Normally this wouldn't have big consequences because he wasn't driving when he was raided. But this government agency had been surveilling this guy for one week so that definitely meant that they had seen him driving. He was fined somewhere close to 30,000 euros. And he went to jail for two weeks and everything seized was destroyed except for his car. He and his wife had to do something like 40 hours of community service. They had to sell the house, which made for very happy neighbors because they were pretty much done with them. When I fight, I fight dirty. You have to really make an effort for me to get to that point. They did and they suffered for it. A year later when I was shopping for groceries, I ran across those old neighbors again. If looks could kill, I would be a smoldering heap of ash, but I didn't get anything more than that. I feel like this is just common sense. If you're going to break the law, don't also be a jerk to everyone around you because then they will gleefully turn you in. If this neighbor had just been a nice guy, then he'd probably still be broadcasting radio to this day, but no, he had to be a jerk to OP. <laughs> and he had to be a jerk while he had a giant obelisk, a pillar of his illegal activities in his backyard. What an idiot. Our next Reddit post is from Spec97. For background, me and my three roommates moved into a neighborhood that's basically just a bunch of cookie cutter townhomes. All of these homes have garages with a front door that opens to a path on the side of your house. When we first moved in, we quickly found out that parking could be a bit of a pain during the day, especially when people had guests during the weekend. Now, admittedly, my roommates and I have more cars than the average family. We usually have to commute for work, so we each have a car. We try to make parking easier by using our garage, but we have tons of sporting equipment, so we can usually only get one car in the garage. When all the free parking spots were full, we would just park our extra cars right up against the garage and leave them during the day or overnight. We'd seen other neighbors do it, and it still left ample room for people driving on the street to get by. Well, one day, our douchebag neighbor comes up while my roommates and I are organizing the garage and tells us that we can't park our cars there overnight because it's against the community rules. Before we had a chance to respond, he added, And if you do it again, I will personally make sure that you're towed. His first comment was pretty reasonable. We had just moved in and we didn't know that rule. But his second comment really just made him sound like a douchebag and it wasn't necessary. One of my roommates simply responded that we didn't know because we just moved in so we wouldn't park there overnight anymore. 
Well, our douchebag neighbor, clearly trying to assert his dominance, responded with, Good, you better not, because I'll be watching. Well, from then on, we did follow those rules. If we parked in front of our garage during the day, we would make sure to move before going to sleep. This worked out for a while until one fateful day. One of my roommates stopped by quickly after work to grab some dinner and clothes before heading to his girlfriend's. This was around 7pm, so he just parked up against the garage because it would be quicker than going to the parking spaces. Plus, it was early enough that he didn't think that he'd get towed. Around 8pm, he went outside, and his car was gone. Guess who was there, though? Our douchebag neighbor standing right outside. Immediately, he said to my roommates, I told you you were going to get towed if you parked here again. They argued for a bit before my roommate came back inside and called the towing company. They were closed, so he would have to get his car in the morning. The kicker? They were going to charge him an overnight fee. All in all, it came out to $500, which is not a small amount of money for us. This neighbor has been a douchebag to us since we moved in, and even though it wasn't my car that was towed, I took this personally. To make sure that we didn't get towed again, we decided to read the community rules, and lo and behold, we found out that the street in front of the garage is actually a fire lane, and no one is supposed to park there at any point during the day. Between our douchebag neighbor treating us like garbage, and the fact that we could hear him yelling at his wife every night, I started to plan my revenge. Since quarantine started, I've been able to work from home, and my desk conveniently looks out into the street between the houses. This means that I can clearly see my neighbor's garage. For about two weeks, I noticed that he would come home around 1pm and leave again at 2pm. On the third week, I decided I would begin my revenge. On Monday, true to his schedule, he stopped by his house at around 1pm. After about 10 minutes, I gave the tow company a call and said that he was parked in the fire lane and if they could come remove his car. 20 minutes later, a tow truck rolled up, hooked up his car, and towed it off. About 15 minutes later, my neighbor came out, and I could hear him start to yell back into his house, presumably at his wife. He then left, and he didn't come back until later that evening after he'd gotten his car. Now, this was funny, and I made sure to send Snapchats to my roommates who don't work from home, but I wasn't done yet. You see, this moron apparently didn't learn his lesson, because literally the next day he parked in front of his garage again. So, what do I do? Well, the exact same thing as the day before, of course. Again, my neighbor comes out, realizes his car is gone, yells at his wife, and then goes to get it. After that moment, my neighbor became a bit smarter and parked in an actual spot before going to get his lunch or whatever it is he does there midday. He does this for about two weeks before he decides that it's okay to park in front of his garage again. Well, guess who's still sitting at their desk every day and notices this immediately? Me, of course. And being the concerned resident that I am, I immediately call the tow company and off his car goes again. And once again, my neighbor responds by yelling at his wife. I wish that I had a more satisfying ending, but after this third time, I decided that I would stop because I genuinely felt bad for his wife who would always get yelled at even though that it was his fault that he was a moron. What I can tell you is that I definitely cost him over $1,000. If he hadn't gotten my roommate's car towed, then we would have never found out about that fun little rule. OP, you're a better man than me because I would have literally never stopped towing that guy's car. That was r slash pro revenge, and if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.